Today, I did something I've never done before. We'll just uh, put them on a catheter and increase the IV drip. Yeah, that'll be enough. I'll see you in about 45 minutes. Okay, bye. I'm glad you're still here. I thought you left me all alone. I was gonna bring some breakfast up to you in bed. I don't want breakfast in bed. I want you in bed. You have a promise to keep, remember? I know I do, honey, but I gotta get to the hospital. Uh, that's not fair. You're always going to the hospital. You have a promise to keep with me. I know. Listen, Dr. Cohen's gonna cover me from six for the whole evening. So tonight, I'll be yours completely. How's that sound? That's great, but it's not enough. I'll make it up to you. Anything you want, just name it. Hmm. Let's see. I want a week alone with you on a deserted island. No phones, no faxes, no cell phones, no emergency rooms, and no beepers. Okay, mm -hmm. I get the message. <laughs> Joanna, hi. I gotta get to work. I'm late. Well, hi, John. Hi, Joanna. Having a little morning quickie? I wish. I thought so. Isn't it a little early for you? Well, I wanted to catch you before you left. Like I have anywhere to go. So things still aren't improving with John? Uh-uh, it's worse than ever. Oh, girl, you need a change. I need something. Well, there's this little social club that I really like to go to. What kind of social club? Well, it's made up of women like us whose husbands love to take off to work. They don't have time to give us any romantic attention. So we go up to this house and we sit and talk and whatnot. So? So I want you to come with me. Please, it's so fun. What, now? Well, I don't think you've got anything better to do. No. Well, come on, then. It'll be fun, please. Okay. Okay, come on, go get dressed. Let's okay, go. come on. I'll be down in a couple minutes. Okay. your lovely friend. She's a new girl. Samantha. Yes? I would like you to meet the uh, host of our little club here. This is Lavia. Lavia, this is Samantha. Very nice to meet you, Samantha. Uh, same. Um, it's a really nice place you've got here. Oh, thank you. Did Joanna told you anything about our little women's club? Actually, nothing at all. Nothing, huh? Nothing at all. <laughs> How entertaining. I thought it would be a pleasant surprise, you know. 
Good afternoon, ladies. Oh, good afternoon. Joanna, are you ready for your one o'clock? I have been waiting for it all week. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Do you care for a drink? Um, no, I usually don't drink this early. I think today it's gonna be a special occasion. How about Bloody Mary? Um, okay. Ernie, could you get me a Bloody Mary, please? Sure, coming right up. I believe Joanna just did that. Oh, we're here to please people. Everyone does only what they want to do. Oh, well, I'm a happily married woman. I can never do anything like that. If you were happily married, you wouldn't still be here. That Joanna really knows how to put a show. She's done this before? But of course, sweetheart, she's one of our most popular girls. Girls? See, Joanna's truly an artist. She's what you'd call an erotic poem in the flesh. Really? Oh, permit me. My name's Fletcher Ross. Oh, excuse me, Fletcher. This is Samantha. Samantha, this is our most generous client, Fletcher Ross. Please. Samantha's just visiting. She's not a member yet. Well... When she does join, please let me be the first. Or, if you're interested, I could drop my two o'clock for Miss Samantha. And of course, money's not an issue. Although, right now, I've only got about $2,000 on me. But, you know, I'm good for about whatever. Uh, I, I don't think I'm quite ready for this. I understand. We'll discuss this later. No problem. It's a pleasure meeting you. Ciao. Hello. Joanna, how could you bring me to a place like this? And how could you do that? I saw you on the monitor. I am so embarrassed. Well, it's always a shock the first time. But if you think about it, it really is the perfect situation for us. Oh, really? Well, you're a sexual woman. I think you need to express yourself. And I know that you don't do it at home. And I know that you're not getting ready to leave your rich husband with his beautiful house and the beautiful cars, are you? No. So? Well, so this is a very discreet club. The men are wonderful and charming and very stimulating. And there are absolutely no strings attached. So you pay money to have an affair? <laughs> Sam, you've missed the point. It's not the intrigue in having an affair. It's being a dirty little slut. <laughs> and you know, when I charge a man, it makes me feel like a real whore. <sighs> so you brought me here to, well, it's not about the money. I mean, we have a lot of money. <laughs> we don't need that. It's about making a man pay for it. You know, when, when someone pays me three or four thousand dollars, it makes me feel like I'm really worth something. And I know there's a lot of men here who would pay a lot for you. <laughs> I can't believe you think I would do something like this. Well, of course you could. Every woman could. We all have a dark and dirty side to us. I mean, don't you ever wonder what it would be like to be a prostitute? To just live off the of sex? I mean, men go nuts over it. Well, why do you think you dress up so nice and do your hair and your lips and your fingernails and stockings and shoes? It's to be sexy, just like a prostitute. She's inviting men to indulge into her sexual and physical beauty. That object of desire. Yeah, that's what we are. We're objects of desire. This is making me nauseous. Well, the more you ignore it, the stronger that dark side gets until it consumes your whole life. And you will have an affair with the wrong man in the wrong place, and your marriage will be ruined. 
So think of this as a release valve, kind of letting out steam, you know. Well, thank you very much for the invitation, but it's definitely not for me. I am not a prostitute. Well, your husband could fuck you for free, but does he? And I wonder why. Because he doesn't think you're worth anything. You're not worth a hundred dollars. Not even ten. Not even a nickel. He just doesn't care. And also, if somebody's going to pay you three to four thousand dollars, do you think that he's going to run off to the hospital for the first patient with a runny nose? I think I'm ready to leave. John's promised to be home for dinner, and I have to go. And you believe that? Yes, I do. He promised. Oh, Sam. All right, I'll take you home. Let's go. Joanna. Well, I was just calling to see how the dinner was going. Well, John's running a few minutes late, but he'll be home. He promised. John isn't coming, Sam. And you know that down deep. He isn't married to you anymore. He's married to the hospital. It's his love. It's his mistress. You're just part of the home furnishings. Why are you tormenting me? I'm not tormenting you. He is. John promised. He had another doctor go on call for him. He may be a few minutes late, but he's on his way home. He promised. Dan called two hours ago. There was a huge fire downtown. Looks like the emergency room is swamped. I don't think they're going to make it home tonight. John promised. He may be a little bit late, but he's coming home. He promised. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm going to pick you up at noon tomorrow. We'll go let off a little steam. No! What? Sam? You there? Listen, honey, I know you must be upset, but I'm sure you heard about the big fire downtown. I thought it'd calm down in a couple hours, but it's still a big mess down here. It's utter chaos, honey. I'll be here really late, way past 10. I'm sorry. Listen, I'll make it up to you, I promise, okay? I'm really sorry, honey. Oh, of course. Okay, cause I don't know if I could actually do anything. Well, you'll know when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Joanna! Lavia. <laughs> and you, Samantha, do you? Hi, Lavia. Oh, so we didn't scare you after all, huh? Um, no, but um, I'm just here to watch, if that's okay. A drink? Yeah, yeah, actually, that Bloody Mary was good. Joanna? I, I'll have the same. That sounds fine. Two Bloody Marys. Can I do some? Oh, thank you, yes. Many people like to just watch. But if you feel like indulging a little, I don't think any of these gentlemen around here will mind. Masturbate in public? This is not public. This is an exclusive club. Well, well, well. Samantha, how nice to see you've graced us with yet another visit. Hi, Mr. Ross. Now, just call me Fletch. You know, Joanna's right. No one here is gonna mind. As a matter of fact, I would enjoy watching you enjoy yourself watching another couple. Uh, I don't know if I'm quite ready. $1,000 to forget that Joanna and myself are here. 
Just enjoy yourself. His lovely, sweet, rich wife were up to during her afternoons. If the good doctor only knew his wife was one of the most exclusive whores of Beverly Hills. Why, yesterday, I got to spank the bottom of none other than the head administrator of the very hospital John works at. How about that? And even now, John's over there without the slightest clue as to what I'm all about. But now, it seems almost convenient that he's so busy. He has his work, and I have my... Well, I wouldn't exactly call it work. Joanna was right. There is a little whore in us all. Vibrant. I am. <laughs> Sam was a marvel this morning. A most excellent session. Very erotic, very natural, and worth every cent. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, you're spending the whole afternoon with me. Ooh, I'm looking forward to it. That's great. You know what? I gotta run. But thanks again for the wonderful morning. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Don't you think he's overreacting just a little bit? He's certainly smitten by our Samantha. I say more like obsessed. Oh, you're just jealous because he's not giving you any attention. You remember how he was taken by you when he first got here? Yeah. He's a charmer. He's rich and intelligent and good looking and his penis isn't too shabby either. <laughs> you girls. <laughs> What does he do? Uh, I don't really know. His money's always good, so I don't ask. I hear he's a political troubleshooter. He handles delicate problems. What kind of problems, Joanna? He's an assassin. No way. Oh, that's rumor. He's just really discreet about his private life. And his business. Oh, he's a very quiet, generous client that likes to play erotic games. Nothing more or less gross. But he hasn't seen anyone since Samantha got here. I'm sure that will wear off really quickly, especially with a new girl walking in here. And then Samantha will be singing the blues. So enjoy the attention while it lasts. I intend to. <laughs> Flashlight freaks. There was the circus. <gasps> oh, I gotta see this. You got some bags? Are they in the car? Um, no, I didn't find anything I liked. Wow, that's a surprise. Drink. What are you doing home? It's only... Well, I got to thinking, you know, about not spending enough time with you. I don't understand why Fletcher did what he did. He seemed so much more in control of himself. I haven't gone back to Lavia's since that strange encounter with Fletcher. 
but I did talk to her on the phone. She said Fletcher came back. You'd think that being intimate with a man as much as I have with Fletcher, I'd know more about him. I know something about what he likes sexually, or I thought I did. After that incident, I don't even think I know that about him. Hello? Sam, how are you? I'm exhausted. Look, I don't have much time, but I'm gonna be home early for dinner, okay? Great! I'm gonna bring a colleague. Well, actually, a an acquaintance is more like it. I was hoping you might cook us something for dinner. Okay, is it just the two of you? Well, he said his girlfriend would be there, so I guess he's gonna bring a guest. And it'll be four of us. Uh, about what time? Around 7.30. Is that okay? Yeah, I'll manage. Good. I'll see you soon, honey. Okay, I love you. I gotta rush. Bye, baby. Bye. But what would happen if he did, somehow, show up again? Would he hurt me? Tell John? What would John do? I don't know. Roger. That was fast. Roger Delamar, very esteemed neurosurgeon from Chicago. Me? My lovely wife, Samantha. Yeah. My pleasure. Thanks. Okay. What happened to your date? Well, uh, kind of had a lover's tiff, you know. Yeah, I'm bad. sure it'll work out. Drinks? Sure. Scotch? Jack. Rocks. Have a seat. I'm gonna grab the drinks. Sure. That was terrific. Thanks. You're a lucky man, John. Having a wife like Samantha. Smart, beautiful, and a good cook. What else could a man ask for? I know. I am lucky. Well, I mean, there is being good in bed that does come into effect, but, um, but how would I know how good she is in bed? I don't know. I'm, I'm just kidding, John, just kidding. I mean, I'm sure she's great in bed. Is she? Roger, please. Is she good in bed? Roger, I think that's enough. I'm sure she's a good hot little fuck. <clears throat> Come on. A rich, Miller housewife, a lot of time on her hands? Roger, this is getting a little too crude. Now tell me, John, what do you think your wife does on her days off? Does she tell you she goes shopping every day? Five days a week? That's an awful lot of shoes. Tell me, what do you think your little angel does on her days off? It's none of your fucking business, Roger. I got a great idea. Why don't we all go watch what she does on her days off? Headlines probably read something like local surgeon found dead, killed. Uh, uh.
But Fletcher Ross didn't show up. But it was a great erotic fantasy. Bryce, there's a Samantha Taylor here to see you. Send her in, and you go home. Cool. Samantha. It is so good to see. Because they have big mouths and small dicks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Did you have some papers for me to sign? Yeah. You want juice, coffee, drink? No, I'm fine. Well, wouldn't want to keep you from shopping or anything. Let's get right down to business. Actually, it's a videotape. I wanted you to watch. It's uh, very interesting. Entertainment. Where did you get that? Uh, the woman on the table. Officer was breaking and entering. I believe it was your house. There was a scuffle. And wouldn't you know it, come to find out the client and the person that was shot seemed to frankly at the same social club. John already knows about that. It's not John that I worry about. It's the press. You see, there's enough evidence here to put Lavia and her house of ill repute away. But once the police and the press start poking around, asking questions, and the name of a prominent surgeon's wife comes up, this could be very bad for this prominent surgeon who's trying to get onto the National Medical Board. You wouldn't. <laughs> you can buy them back. Mmm. Mm, 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 mm. With your sexual wares. That's right, Samantha. I want you to take off your clothes. So what brings you back? Oh, nothing really. I just miss the good old days. And you brought a friend. Lavia, this is Charlene. Charlene, Lavia. Pleased to meet you. Mm -hmm. And have you told her all about us? Not exactly. But I thought she'd appreciate it. How nice. Why don't you have a seat? The session is about to start. Something to drink? Bottled water. Me too. Marco, two bottles of water, please. A session? Yeah, it's uh, kind of like entertainment for guests who aren't participating. Like a floor show. In a way. What is this? It's uh, kind of like a performance art. Really? Is it like a video or something? Or something. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Kiss each other. What kind of a place is this? Uh, like I said, Charlene, it's an unusual club. People come here to have their fantasies fulfilled. You mean that was real? Very real. Oh, that's disgusting. I could never imagine Anthony doing anything like that, especially to me. That's why people come here, is to have their fantasies fulfilled. They just need to connect with the right person. And the right price. 
price. It's not about money. We have husbands for that. It's about making them pay for it. So this is a... No, no, not in the way you think. Look, this is just much too much for me to deal with right now. I really need to go, but thank you. It didn't work. She will never step foot in this place no, again. No, no. She's ready. It's in her. Just to have her mention that she couldn't imagine her husband Anthony doing anything like this means she's obviously thought about it. She wants to be debased. She wants to be taken from that high pedestal her husband has placed her upon and brought back down to earth. She'll be back. Because if he can't do it, she will find someone else to do it for her. She has to come back. Her libido has no place else to go. Take her home. Make yourself available to her. Okay. Fine. I love it when a plan comes together. Fancying meeting you in a place like this. What are you doing here? Bryce is one of our best customers. Figures. And not a bad lover either. Those sexual obnoxious jokes are all a front. And you don't have to worry about him doing anything crazy like falling in love with you. He's just a good, plain fuck. And he requested you, of course, in an exclusive introductory rate. Very expensive. Which reminds me, what do women in condoms have in common? I wouldn't know. They spend more time in your wallet than they do on your dick. Oh, you have got to be kidding. Think about it, Charlene. Mixing disgust and lust, your husband's <sighs> business partner. Just feel all those emotions building inside. You always were the quintessential pervert, weren't you? If you only knew. <laughs> so what do you like? Being tied up, whipped? No, you like to do that to a woman because you're such a cheap little coward. Ooh, she's got some spunk, huh? There was a woman like you here before. Ambiguous about her feelings. Rich husband, sexually neglected. In need of adventure and excitement, or just a good fuck. So what's the point? One day she brought a friend. You set this all up. I sensed a need. Oh, you did, did you? I would not turn down an opportunity to corrupt a friend's wife. You are absolutely disgusting. Well, come on. Let's see how disgusting you really are. How did it make you feel? Dirty. Good. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs>